This is CBC Here and Now. Round and round we go. St. John's proposes multi-lane roundabouts for the parkway. Torbay fishermen say the recreational fishery is trumping the commercial. Your boats are going home, they're going to work. This is our work right here. Chase the Ace made the Beta Bird parish richer but not happier. Showers and thunderstorms on the go through this evening will clear out for especially the island tomorrow. Pretty solid Tuesday shaping up, but scattered showers in the mix most of the week. The details are coming up. Well, our top story tonight, more and bigger roundabouts are in store for St. John's. Yes, it'll mean big changes for one of the busiest routes in the city, the Prince Philip Parkway. Yes, yeah, City Council tabled a 400 page traffic study this afternoon looking for ways to improve traffic flow and keep pedestrians safe around the university. Here now's Glenn Payette is on this story tonight and joins us now live from the parkway. So Glenn, tell us about the plan. Well, it's a big study with big plans, and one of those plans is to change this intersection here at Ellendale and Prince Philip Drive into a roundabout. Now, the consultant study was done for the city, Memorial University, the Health Sciences Center, and the province, and it says that about the only way to improve traffic throw flow here through the university and the Health Sciences Center is to put in a series of roundabouts. Now the city hopes to do this by 2025. It would put the first one here at Ellendale and Prince Philip. This intersection handles about 18,000 vehicles a day. Now one of the reasons the uh, city would like to have it here as the first is so that people could get used to driving roundabouts. Now there are a number of them in and around the city, but none besides this one would be. The next one would be down at Westerland and the Health Sciences Center, and that would mean that drivers would have to get used to dealing with emergency vehicles, ambulances, in a roundabout. The third one would be at the end of the parkway at Thurburn Road down at the Avalon Mall. Now, what would all this cost? The truth is, we don't know. The only estimate we have is for asphalt of about five to six million dollars. Now, something else the consultant study does recommend is dealing with the safety of students here at Memorial University crossing Westerland, crossing uh, the parkway. There have been accidents over the years and even protests. The study recommends that a pedway be built going from the education building over, over to the new core science building at Westerland. The estimated cost for that project would be about $4 million, but there is no time frame for it. So big changes ahead for drivers here in St. John's. Reporting from St. John's, I'm Glenn Payette for Here and Now. Well, every weekend, the waters off Torbay are alive with people taking part in the food fishery, but a group of commercial cod fish harvesters are upset about that. They feel they've been pushed aside for the recreational fishery. Here now is Ryan Cook explains. These are the commercial fishermen of Tapper's Cove. Small boats, aging men, and back-breaking work. They say there's no room for a few old men here. They feel the cove is being turned over to the recreational fishery. Where do we go to make our living when the cod comes back? The cod's back. You see it right there, love? I hauled three nets today. So the cod is back. Where do we go to make a living? At the base of their frustrations is their need for a jib crane, a $50,000 rig. It would haul the fish from the boats and place it in their trucks. No more hauling by hand. They say it's become a safety issue. When we're leaning out over the wharf, heisting off fish, who's going to be responsible when the bus falls on the boat and gets healed? The commercial fishers say DFO told them they can't have a jib crane. Their landings are not enough to meet the basic amount for funding, but Tapper's Cove is designated by DFO as a core harbour, a place defined as being critical to the fishing industry. Martin believes the only thing DFO considers critical is the recreational fishery. So all these recreation fishermen, they're all going to work this morning. Their boats are going home, they're going to work. This is our work right here. And we're trying to be forced out. On weekends, Tapper's Cove is busy with recreational boats. More than $300,000 was spent here on these rocks, which will extend the parking lot for more recreational fishers. Martin says DFO and the local harbor authority are more concerned with the food fishery. He says he worries about the future of commercial fishing in Torbay. 
the community settled by fishermen. And what's going to be here in five years' time when the cod comes back? We don't know that. There could be 20 boats here tired of waiting off load like was here back in the 90s and 80s. This is what, this is what made this place and this is what's going to make it again. Fishermen will be meeting with MP Nick Whalen tomorrow to try and secure funding for a jib crane. But for now, they'll have to make do with bad backs and old weathered hands. Ryan Cook, CBC News, Torbay. While Newfoundland's Paralympic swimming champion has another four medals to add to her collection, Katarina Roxon was back in competition in Montreal on the weekend. Roxon swam in the Canadian Swimming Championships yesterday. She won gold in the 200-meter individual medley. And right after that race, she went on to take the bronze medal in the 100-meter butterfly race. Roxon is from Kippens on the west coast of the island. Earlier in the competition, she broke the America's record, winning gold in the 50-meter breaststroke. She also won silver in the 50-meter freestyle swim. There's an update to tell you about tonight to a CBC Investigate story from earlier in the year. We told you about nearly $14 million in overdue property taxes owed to the city of St. John's. Well, council now says it's going to follow through with tougher measures to get some of that cash back. That includes more notices to cut off water services, more potential legal action, and a tax sale for delinquent properties this fall. People have come to the city and they've expressed concern about people paying their taxes on time and it not being fair for those that are just getting away with it for a long period of time. MHAs will hold a special session tomorrow to elect a new Speaker of the House. Premier Dwight Ball wants former Cabinet Minister Perry Trimper to get the position, but the MHA for Harbour Grace Port de Grave also wants a shot at the job. Pam Parsons told the St. John's Morning Show that she wants to make history by becoming the first female Speaker, and she's getting a lot of encouragement. In all honesty, um, it was it was brought to my attention. Um, some some of my colleagues approached me and encouraged me. I will say it's not something. I guess it's not a genesis of my of my own. It's not my own idea, but you know it's been encouraged to me, Pam. This is something that you should certainly consider. So you know, um, I've 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 reached out to many of my colleagues, of course, and um, I must say I'm receiving a lot of encouragement. Also, I've talked to my family, and uh, most importantly, I've talked to my constituents in the district I represent, which is Harbour Grace Port of Grave. So how does the Premier feel about this? Well, Parsons says she met with him and he told her that whether or not she throws her hat in the ring is entirely her decision. And in case you're curious about salary, the Speaker is paid an extra $49,000 on top of an MHA's base salary of $95,000. Well, the opposition is worried tonight that the government may be ready to give Suncor a break on royalties for its Terra Nova project. Right now, it's set to end in 2022, but the company is looking for ways to extend that. And the opposition says it's heard that the company wants a break. Royalty regime put in place is for the development of the project, whether extension or otherwise. And any indication of a change to that is certainly a concern to us. And I think a concern should be for the people of the province. In a statement this afternoon, the minister says she hasn't even had meetings with Suncor about Terra Nova. Hear more of what she had to say, as well as the concerns from the opposition, coming up later in the show. A search for Courtney Lake was conducted this weekend in the woods near the airport in St. John's. Lake has been missing since the first week of June after getting into a black pickup truck in Mount Pearl. The RNC's forensic identification unit and about 40 searchers were looking for Lake. There are members of the Central Avalon Ground Search and Rescue Team and the Rovers Search and Rescue Team. No one is saying why the searchers focused on that area on the weekend. Well, the highest court in the province has upheld Trevor Party's conviction for murdering his former girlfriend. Triffy Wadman was shot to death in St. John six years ago. Party asked the appeals division of the Supreme Court to overturn his conviction. He argued that the trial judge made a mistake in his instructions to the jury. But in a unanimous decision, the appeals court ruled that the instructions were adequate. Party claimed that the shooting was an accident and that the gun went off when he and Wadman struggled. Well, remember that frenzy created by Chase the Ace and Beta Verde last year? Well, it turns out the fundraiser did more than fill the local parish's bank account with a bundle of money. It also created tension and raised plenty of questions about how the money is being spent. And it's forced the bishop to, to step in and take drastic action. Here now is Terry Roberts reports. This was the jubilant scene in Beta Verde a year ago. 
Chris LeDrew turning up the elusive ace, a huge jackpot for him and his nine friends. But that excitement has long since disappeared. In a recent letter to parishioners, Bishop Anthony Daniels gave a very dire assessment of the situation. It is worth our time to seriously reflect on the fact that what seemed like a great blessing has also exposed divisiveness, suspicions, and distrust within the community of disciples of Jesus Christ. He's also ordered an audit of the millions in revenue that poured in during the event, and he told the parish in Beta Verde to elect a new finance committee. And the reason for asking for that audit is really to demonstrate, hopefully, that everything was done by the up and up. But at this point, I have no reason to believe that anything was done that was intended to, to mislead either the diocese or the parish. Like most parishes, Beta Verde struggles each month to pay the bills. But last year, according to a financial statement, the parish brought in two and a half million dollars, almost all of which from Chase the Ace ticket sales. But tensions flared this spring, with some questioning how the money was being spent, and even criticizing a decision to donate $100,000 to a neighboring parish. Daniels says he has no plans to ban Chase the Ace in the diocese, saying many parishes have benefited greatly from the fundraiser. But he's cautioning others to be completely transparent and fully communicate all their decisions. Having a lot of money is not necessarily better than having none, because Having a lot of money can bring out some ugliness in any one of us. Terry Roberts, CBC News, St. John's. Well, in slightly happier news, Sarah Harmer was on stage over the weekend, so was Amelia Curran. But for many people at this weekend's Newfoundland and Labrador Folk Festival, it was kids entertainers Sharon and Bram that really yes. seemed to steal the show. <laughs> yes, flashback. Uh, more than 2,000 people gathered in Bannerman Park for the annual event. And on Sunday, af Saturday afternoon, rather, the park was jam-packed with pint-sized festival goers. Well, shows and white cheese are the center petticoat once a barter. Old Sam Oliver in the dark, Big Mister in the corner. We just had a fantastic evening last night, and today is beautiful. And there's tons of kids around, and it's just an overall exciting weekend, really. So, grown-ups, give your children the example. Here we go. Three up and a down. Peanut, peanut butter, sugar. Peanut. This is one of my many Sharon Lois and Bram records. It's probably the most well-loved of all of them. They thought it was extremely cool and extremely neat, and they were surprised. <laughs> and they were very pleased to know that I was still playing them for preschool kids. People have kept those uh, LPs now for, well, since 78, 1978, 79, and after. Right. And the recordings live through the generations. This is really cool. We're almost afraid to say that this is sort of the high point of the day for us. This is, <laughs> this is absolutely, this is the exciting part. It was quite amazing. I've never seen this before. It was, it was really Shut amazing. Peanut, peanut butter, do it for us. Peanut, peanut butter, Shut Peanut, peanut butter, Shut Okay, it's been quite a few years <laughs> yeah, since years. I've seen them. <laughs> yeah. Although I could still, I'm pretty sure I could still do the full skin of marinky, dinky, dink, skin of marinky, do you know? Yes, yes. So Everyone I think remembers that. I think the adults may have enjoyed the children's performance a little more than the kids actually did yeah. there. But popular act for sure on the weekend. Well, you're looking at rainy St. John's Harbour weather, but that's not just the only weather people are talking about, towny weather. What about the rest of the province? Ryan Snodden. Well, if you have a spare $337,000, you can rent this beauty for a week. The yacht is anchored in St. John's Harbour. We'll tell you all about it later in the show.
Time now to bring in Ryan for a look at the weather forecast. Certainly not a pleasant night out there. No. Well, it's because I'm back. And <laughs> it's really, really good to see you, Ryan. Yeah, Carolyn delivers the nice weather. I come back. It rains. You know how it goes. And uh, a lot of people are getting out in boat, yeah, doing yeah. a little bit of fishing, but also a bit of whale watching. Have a look at this. Okay, so it starts off, it looks like just a regular, you know, you're seeing a few whales. They're up here, they're yeah. jumping around. Uh, these, this was Jennifer Nash Greeley, Jim Greeley, and Bren Lewis. They were out cod fishing and checking out the whales. And then this happens. Wait for it. It's gonna be. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> Get them! A few curse words there, but I think it's entirely understandable in that moment. Yeah, we had to clean up the language for family friendly television, but. Uh... Oh, Jesus, <laughs> Apparently, you can say Jesus, Mary, and Joseph on the air, but yeah, not the rest of it. That's right, yeah. Uh, what a shot, though. Wow. And unfortunately, she couldn't hold the camera quite straight <laughs> after it surprised her a little too much, but that is definitely. We've had a lot of whale videos on this year. I think that takes the cake. Though. I think so too. That's such yeah. a rare sight to even see, but then to also capture it. Yeah, yeah I think she was then too wow. busy after that go changing her pants. Anyway. Yeah, that too. <laughs> that too. Uh, so uh, to segue to the weather, great whale watching weather tomorrow across the province. Uh, not so much today where we've had the thunderstorms. Yeah. Have a look at this snapshot that Denise took in Winterland on the Buren Peninsula. Great snapshot there of the lightning that was rolling through the Buren Peninsula earlier today. That was up in the central parts of Newfoundland as well. And that line has been working its way eastward and onto the Avalon as we've moved over the last little bit here. Latest satellite and radar, the center of the low actually in Labrador. It's moving slowly but surely to the northeast. Labrador still stays quite unsettled tomorrow under this low with lots of pop-up showers. On the island, it's mainly been this line that's slowly but surely moving its way eastward and has been rolling across the Avalon over the last hour or so. Poor Glenn Payette talking about the uh, roundabouts and was standing in the rain there. Uh, we are going to be seeing that again wander just to the east over the next hour or so. That rain will start to clear off. Still a few lightning strikes detected over the last uh, 10 or 15 minutes. The southern shore and just south of the metro region, a couple of rumbles of thunder in the Mount Pearl region and up into St. John's. But again, most of the action has been further to the south. There's the latest radar snap. Again, a couple of snaps just offshore from Vermeuse. From some drier air coming in. There's been a bit of grumbling about the humidity. It's uh, been a little bit too humid for some. Uh, the good news is, yeah, some drier air coming in behind. Look at those dew points right now. And as we look at our scale, so anything in that 18 to 20 range is getting uncomfortable. So we've been certainly feeling that over the last day or so, but drier air coming in. So uh, you folks uh, that aren't a big fan of the humidity, uh, a nicer forecast for tomorrow where we have the warm temps, and the low humidity. There are your conditions for tomorrow morning. 12 to 13 degrees, around 15 uh, for the uh, Port of Basque region. Some showers up into the Labrador City region. Nain, chances some scattered showers in through Happy Valley. The Goose Bay, as we roll throughout the day tomorrow, again, still unsettled. That low is swirling overhead in Labrador. On the island, it's a great start, but note the clouds that are building up into the afternoon, especially along the south coast. Perhaps a, a shower by supper time for Port of Basque and down towards the Port of Port. Overall, though, it's a pretty quiet day. 7 to 7, we'll start near 12. We'll get up to 22 in Metro tomorrow. The sun sets tomorrow at 824 tomorrow evening, and the clouds will thicken up there. So all in all, a pretty nice looking forecast. Hold on now, Ryan. Like Hold on now, buddy. I got to ask you a question. Now, I know I'm not supposed to be here, but I got to ask you a question. What's this? Yes, right Sean. Here? Yes, What's Sean. What's this? What's that? Well, that's, that's yeah, the, the, Bavert. the Bavert Peninsula. Yeah, but uh, you're missing somewhere. You're missing a place. It's right there. It's just right there. It's called Burlington. Why do you have Bavert on the map, but you don't have Burlington? Well, I work hard to put that town on the map, and you're telling me it's not on the map. Well, I, I can't fit every single yes, town Yes, you can. Well, not all the of them. Map, just Burlington. All right. Burlington, Middle Arm, and Smith Harbor. That's all right here, and that's getting pretty hot. You know why? Because they're angry that they're not on the map, because I told them I was going to put it on the map, and you didn't. I don't care how handsome you are. Well, What's up with that? You know what? Tomorrow I'll, I'll, I'll put Burlington on. How's that, that would be amazing. Yeah. If you could do that, see, I'm putting Burlington on the map. Have, have, you, really have you done excited. the weather before? I've never done I would love, actually, the only reason I'm here because I've never done the weather properly before. You press that green button. That'll, oh. that'll flick you to the next scene. 
Yeah. And you can finish up and, and talk about No training wheels. Podcast. No training wheels. Okay, right now. I'm not nearly as handsome as him. But let's go up to Nain and uh, let's go up to Labrador right now. As you can see, Nain is looking really good. By the way, I was just in Nain. It is an awesome town. Hello to everybody up in Nain. You're a fabulous host on the Canada C3. Amazing. Uh, I've never been to Makovic, but it looks like it's going to be hot tomorrow. Cartwright smoking. Happy Valley Goose Bay. Forget about it. Churchill Falls. Wow. Lab City, whatever, you're too close to Quebec to worry about. <laughs> All right. And then, I'm kidding, Lab City, I love you too. And then, of course, uh, down here, oh, this is exciting. Yeah. This so right that was here. tomorrow. That was tomorrow. Yeah. How did I do? You did pretty good. Okay. You did pretty good. All right, good. But I know you are looking forward beyond tomorrow. That's right. This is only right now, but I need to know, we have a big festival coming up, as you can tell by my hat, called The Gathering. It's happening on the 24th to the 26th. Plus, we have a tour, which starts down here at St. John's, then goes all the way up to Gander, then goes to Corner Brook, and then goes to Grand... Why Grand Falls Windsor not on the map? Oh Grand Falls Windsor, you're way bigger than Burlington, Middle Arm, Smith Harbor. You should be kicking a fuss with Ryan, but you don't have an honor. It was on the last map, though. Well, not right now. Anyway, we're doing a tour. The gathering is coming up, but I need to know what the weather is going to be like for the gathering, the funnest weekend of the whole summer. Okay, I don't care if David Carver is bringing that country star to, to Grand Falls the same weekend. You're coming to Burlington, Middle Arm, Smith Harbor for the gathering. So, what's so the, the forecast? Be like? Okay, so it's a little bit too far, Sean, to talk about. Okay. What the weather for sure? What do you want it to be? Ooh, I want it to be beautiful, warm, sunny, comfortable, and super humid. Burlington's on the map now. What? That's amazing. <laughs> Burlington is on the map. This is right. Asking you shall receive. So, You're like a wizard. So what's on tap for Thursday? Thursday's looking like it's 25 degrees. Get out of here. Is yeah. it true? Well, uh, Thursday, sure. yeah, we got our comedy show featuring Trent McClellan, the newest member of 22 Minutes. is going to be performing on Thursday night. You don't want to miss that on Thursday. Especially in that forecast. It's going to be Friday. Friday is going to be amazing. We got chef hikes, and it's perfect day for a chef hike. Plus, we've got repartee on Friday night. Are you kidding me right now? Nice. And how about Saturday? Saturday is obviously it's going to be freezing cold. Oh my God! It's 25 degrees. <laughs> this is the best day ever. And Joe Plaskett and his dad Bill are going to be there. Plus the ones and Sherman Downey and so many more. You've made my day. Come here, my buddy. I love you. So, my, 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 sub my, 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 subject my. to change, so, though, Sean. Sub so many women change. out there want to be doing this. <laughs> See that? That's great. This is awesome. This is well, good. Look, come over. Who's this, this over here? Oh, this I want is Carolyn and, and Peter. Hey guys. Come say hi. You know about the Shot. festival. You know yeah. they know about the festival. It sounds like it's gonna be a lot of fun. So good to see you guys. It's great. Up, you know, what? you can come in and fill in for Ryan anytime, I Ryan, think. Ryan, thank you for letting me here. do that. And you you really did put Burlington on the map. Oh well thanks. So Sean. thank Ryan yeah. Snodden, everybody. This is so great. It's great to be here. It's not enough that you have your own fake news show. You have yes. to come and interrupt like the real news as well. Well, I happened to be walking by, you know, out in the rain, and I thought I'd pop in and say hi. We're really stoked about this this tour. We've got a brand it's, new it's tour. It's not often that you get to get away from the movies and That's do right. 22 yeah. minutes and do a little bit of... I figured I'd rent a van and take a bunch of musicians on the road with me. We're doing... What so could possibly go wrong? <laughs> exactly. We're hoping something goes wrong, but we don't have any cameras going. But this is like an extension of the, the festival that we've been doing for the last like five years. Mm -hmm. And uh, our buddy Rudy Norman uh, from Berlin, he's right over there. He's our executive director. Came up with this idea. It's like, why don't we bring the gathering to people all over the island? So we're starting in St. John's on the 18th, then we're going to Gander, then we're going to Corner Brook and Grand Falls. Uh, Kane and Pop Van, uh, Brian Pop Van from uh, the Northern Pikes, mm -hmm. and uh, Kevin Kane. And uh, we've got Sherman Downey, myself, and great food. It's going to be awesome. So wow. go to thegatheringburlington.com for tickets. Awesome. Amazing. How's Looking that? forward to the it. Forecast looks good. You're a great <laughs> kisser, by the way. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Oh. Oh. In about three minutes, more on concerns from the opposition Tories that government might be giving big oil companies a break on royalties.
Welcome back to Here and Now. And as we told you earlier in the show, the opposition is worried that the government may give oil companies a break on royalties. Terra Nova is supposed to wrap up production in five years, but Suncor wants to find a way to keep it going. And there are reports that could mean asking for breaks on the royalties it pays government. Well, that doesn't sit well with PCMHA Keith Hutchings. What evidence do you have that government might actually be willing to give them what they want? Well, we just read an article, a uh, media article, that indicated that there were some discussions ongoing and some officials from Suncor, some senior officials, had been meeting with officials from government and discussing the issue of the royalty regime currently in place. Current structure in the past in Newfoundland and Labrador in terms of uh, development is that a royalty regime put in place is for the development of the project, whether it's extension or otherwise, and any indication of a change to that is certainly a concern to us, and I think a concern should be for the people of the province. But officials just met with government. They didn't, there's no indication from government that they actually are willing to make the change. So if you were minister, you're, you wouldn't sit down with Suncor and at least hear them out? No, you wouldn't entertain a change in your royalty regime because the royalty regime is the development uh, of your oil and gas resources. And the current royalty regime is in place for the development of uh, projects, of basins. Uh, if you remember back in Hebron just recently, when we asked questions about, well, are you going to reopen the royalty regime? And they said no, because the royalty regime is for the life of that project. So there's no difference here today. So the Atlantic Accord is there to protect to make sure that Newfoundland and Labrador best interests are served. We get the best return we can for those resources. And to go back and to revisit a royalty regime that's already in place certainly contradicts that intent and sends a message to the oil industry that on any royalty regime in place, we're willing to go back and renegotiate and reconsider it, which is wrong and wrong for the development of the industry. But do we know that government's even reconsidering it? We just know that they've met with officials. Well, what you meet, if you're not going to consider, why would you meet? I mean, we need to send a message to the oil and gas sector that we have a royalty regime in place. Uh, that's, they want to have certainty, certainly, in regards to what they're doing, so that's there for them. But the other, if you go back and look historically, in 2015, before we left, we brought forward a new royalty regime, which at the time, uh, the opposition leader and even Premier, uh, shortly after that, indicated that he would like to adopt that. They have done nothing with that new royalty regime, and even it indicated in the House to us that in March of 2017, they would have it in place. To date, there's still no royalty regime. So we need a clear indication from them what their intent is. But if you're going back and with current operators in this province and asking to revisit royalty regimes, that's a huge issue for us and for the province. We should never be doing that. They're looking at trying to extend this project beyond the current lifespan. What if they can't do that under the current royalty regime? Would you rather see the project end rather than having a willingness to say, you know, if we're able to get more life and in the end more ro total royalties by going back and renegotiating? Well, think about it, Peter, on either side. If you're an oil company and a partner that uh, can make greater returns on your investment, you're always going to come back and ask. You're always going to say, can we revisit? As a government for Newfoundland and Labrador, we need to protect the best interests of Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, and that means protecting those resources. If we set a royalty regime and let the oil companies know this is what you need to pay for this development, we should never alter that development. Right now, uh, Suncor and their partners had a 38% increase last year in revenues. Uh, they talk about in 2022, if they extend the field, they may have to do uh, upgrades to the FPSO. That's normal maintenance of infrastructure. That infrastructure was paid for out of the initial royalties that came from that project. There's no reason for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians to reinvest in that project right now. They've done well, we've done well, and we need to continue to do well. Well, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with me. Thanks, Peter. Well, did a meeting even happy? Here's what the government told us late this afternoon. The Department of Natural Resources has not had recent meetings with Suncor on the Terra Nova project and is not aware of the report to which the official opposition is referring. Two royalty agreements for Hebron and White Rose were signed by the former PC government. They again conveniently forget their past decisions. And three, the generic oil royalty regime will be proclaimed before the scheduled land tenure this fall. Up next, more on those commercial fishermen who feel they've been pushed aside by the recreational fishery.
Welcome back to Hearing Now. Well, back to one of our top stories. Some cod fishermen in Torbay say the recreational fishery is taking precedence over their commercial fishery. They believe that because they asked that a jib crane be installed to help offload fish to the wharf, but they were turned down. Here and Now's Ryan Cook spoke to fisherman Tom Martin this morning. Can you kind of describe for me what a, how a jib crane would help you? A jib crane would help us because I got a hand bomb all of this fish now up over the wharf. I got a hand bomb it in my truck. If we had a jib crane, you push a button, up she goes on the wharf in the back of your truck. Like we're all, you see us, we're all of getting up to an age. Like we're only here trying to make a living. We're fighting for a jib crane that we should have because it's a safety concern. In, in my eyes right now, it's health and safety. And if, if we can't get a jib crane, I'm assuming it's because they're planning on turning this over to recreation. Recreation means diversification. Recreation could mean that it's going to be privatised and we're going to be forced out. And I was at St. John's last week talking to, Dan, talking to the Harbour Master over there. St. John's is full to capacity. They can't accept no more, no more fishermen. They're full. So he said, we, we can't take no more. This is where they want us to go. Flat Rock is too rough. They, we can't, that's out. They're, they, we, we got Flat Rock fishermen coming up here, right? So like, if they're telling us that this is going recreation, where do we go? In five years' time, if we got a fishery, and I'm a fisherman, I, I fish just all we do for a living, we fish. Where do we go to make our living when the cod comes back? The cod's back. You see it right there, look. I hauled three nets for that. So the cod is back. Where do we go to make a living? How long has this been the, the trend down here, moving this towards is, recreation? This has been the trend for the last eight or nine years. But, like you say, there was no interest in this. We didn't have a fishery. We had a fishery last year, and now we got a fishery this year, and it's, it's back. How many people fish out of here? You're looking at eight or ten people, but there's eight or ten people with crew members. Mm -hmm. You see what's here on the wharf now with just these four little small boats here. Mm -hmm. So you see what's here. And what's going to be here in five years' time when the cod comes back? We don't know that. There could be 20 boats here tied up waiting off load like was here back in the 90s and 80s. Mm -hmm. this, is what, this is what made this place, and this is what's going to make it again. You see it right there out of three nets. So we need this facility. we got to stop privatisation, recreation. If that's what they got their plans, we need to say no, we need to stop it. Do you have any idea why they would be going that route? Because they're saying this is where they're getting most of their money from. Mm -hmm. But like there's seven of us here, if there was 20 fishermen here, right? But this is the reason why this is here, right? Now, they, I'm not putting down the Harbour Authority. I sat on that committee. They'd done a great lot of stuff for this facility. There was nothing here. It was all gone. But who are they doing it for, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're not doing it for us. So I sat on this committee for both parties to work together, mm -hmm. but... As you know, this past spring they had a meeting to try to force us out, mm -hmm. tell me to go to St. John's. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, my fishery here right now was open till the end of November. I fished last year till the end of November, mm -hmm. and I'm going to fish again this year till the end of November. But I cannot go to St. John's in that boat with a load of fish into it, because I'm drowned. Me and my crew member were drowned. We're finished. Mm -hmm. My father drowned over there 30-something years ago when I was 19. So was this what, he was 51 when he drowned. So is this what they want to me, to drown? I'm only here trying to make a living, and me buddy is trying to make a living. So all these recreation fishermen, they're all going to work this morning. Their boats are going home, they're going to work. This is our work right here, and we're trying to be forced out. So I'm just saying, and I'd like to put it across to everyone, all the fish harvesters across the island, this is an eye-opener. We need to say no to recreation taking over our facilities because we have a commercial fishery back. And our jib crane was removed when they done this wharf, and it was promised us that it was going to be returned and put back. There was two jib cranes here, and now there's neither one here. Right? Well, in international news tonight, a searing heat wave that's been roasting southern Europe has people worn out and worried. Even in a part of the continent used to hot weather, and now after days of melting temperatures, a new twist. Thomas Degel has more. In scorching hot Croatia, they've called in the water bombers before forest fires get out of hand. In neighboring Bosnia, it's too late. The mountains are burning over 20 kilometers despite best efforts to put out the flames. Some of the striking scenes from the hellish heat wave known as Lucifer. Across Central and Eastern Europe, temperatures have soared above 40 degrees. In Athens, even Greeks accustomed to a southern climate today found it hard to cope. Uh, I can hardly stand it, she says. It's unbearable. High up in the Austrian Alps, a resort normally open year-round had to restrict skiing hours. 
because it's too warm even there. In Sicily, they're bracing for a wine shortage as grapes ripened at their earliest time in a decade and the heat makes the harvest that much harder. The temperature was so high, we had to tell the workers to come back later when it's cooler, says this vineyard owner. We all suffer. Elsewhere in Sicily, there were different worries, as 15 Italian firefighters were arrested, accused of starting fires to get more work. Today, though, it wasn't only heat causing headaches. The wild weather took a turn. Romania's strong winds knocked down trees, the storm leaving behind golf ball-sized hail. The grapes, my hut, the cornfield, everything is a mess now, he says. Tonight, southern parts of Europe remain under an orange alert, meaning conditions are considered dangerous. Scientists are warning southern Europe will continue to bear the brunt of climate change, with weather-related deaths only increasing. Further west here in Britain, conditions have been more temperate, but that might not last, with forecasters warning of heavy rain and thunder followed by flooding. This summer has seen extreme weather of all forms. Thomas Dagg, with CBC News, London. From the weather story there to weather here. Fortunately, we're not dealing with 40 degree temperatures. Yeah, so. can you imagine? Wow. No, I can't imagine. We hear enough complaining <laughs> when it gets above 25, <laughs> yeah. uh, let alone that. And that's way too hot and uh, obviously uh, uh, causing some, mm -hmm. some deaths there. And uh, now, as we yeah. right hook to uh, and a very impressive looking yacht. Yes, it's a nestled dockside in St. John's Harbor right now. Just have a look at this. Yes, this is the Mondango 3. It's a sleek, ultra modern, two masted sailing boat, 56 meters long. Room on there for 11 guests and up to nine crew. Great boat for going out in the food fishery. The Mon <laughs> <laughs> Don't get any cod guts on the, that no. uh, puppy, though. Uh, the Mondago 3 is a charter out of New Zealand. Now, if your pockets are deep enough, uh, you can rent it for, you know, $337,000 per week. Uh, that would be some expensive uh, cod you'd be catching on that thing. <laughs> 337,000 a week. Wow. That Beauty boat, though. Steal at twice the price. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, that must be some boat. I'd love to see the inside. Me too. Um, okay, now as we uh, take a look, if you are yachting or heading out on the water tomorrow, definitely a better forecast here on the island where we've got some sunshine on the menu. Uh, Tuesday is looking, again, showery in Labrador, so that's why I've got the Tuesday split there. It's a wet Wednesday uh, in the east parts of Newfoundland in particular. Scattered showers are going to linger right into Thursday and Friday as we are kind of in an unsettled pattern. It's not a, uh, a complete washout, but uh, yeah, some showers to watch out for certainly over the next couple of days. This is our main weather player right now. This low that's spinning over Labrador and we've been seeing the front that's been moving across the island today. Some very heavy rainfall, 20 to 40 millimeters in some spots. Now uh, the next system is going to be another wet one and it is brewing right now just rolling off the northeast parts of the U.S. and will be trucking up to the north. So here's how things will play out. That low again kind of stalls out in Labrador on Tuesday. The island will see sun and cloud and some clearing skies. Our next system rolls up through the Maritimes with rain through the day tomorrow. A chance of a late afternoon shower places like Port of Basque and towards the Port of Port Peninsula, but I think it's more so supper time and after. Certainly clouds will thicken up across that south coast. Again, Labrador mainly cloudy with some scattered showers on the menu for tomorrow. And again, 17 to 20 degrees along that south coast. We're looking at anywhere from 20 to 23 degrees for most of uh, Newfoundland and across into Labrador, looking at showers and some periods of rain from Nain to Happy Valley Goose Bay to Labrador City with those dominant clouds. There is our wet maker for Tuesday night in through Wednesday morning will be the wettest time period. If you do have some Wednesday plans, certainly the morning is looking like a bit of a washout for the Avalon Central Newfoundland. Things will clear into the afternoon, but still some scattered showers on the menu. Won't rule out some sunny breaks before uh, the sun goes down. Wednesday along the west coast looking pretty good. Bit of an onshore wind I think will keep things cool and some scattered showers rolling back in to Labrador City. So we're smooth sailing in eastern Labrador. Again, watch for those onshore winds along the west parts of the island. 
showers in Lab West. Other than that, uh, again, Labrador not looking too bad. And there's that rain again, primarily in the morning in eastern Newfoundland by Wednesday into Thursday now. And you can see where uh, this next little trough line will bring some scattered shower chances and that really is it. It's not going to be uh, a big line coming through here, but certainly the pop up risk of some showers for western and central parts of Newfoundland on Thursday. Temperatures should heat up though into the 23 24 degree range for eastern and central parts of Newfoundland and Labrador again, the risk of some scattered showers here into Thursday as well. Now in the long range, you'll note that uh, we will see another risk of some showers on Friday darting through with that trough line. Area of high pressure comes in, and so I think Saturday is quiet. And yeah, clouds certainly thickening up into the afternoon as our next system approaches, but I do think that system will stay to our south until Sunday afternoonish, which again will be uh, one we have to watch over the next couple of days. So right now, Saturday is certainly the pick of the weekend, a bit cooler for Sunday as winds turn uh, southeast ahead of that system coming in. You can see temps dipping back into the teens a little bit, but all in all, not a Bad forecast for uh, here as we approach mid August and you can see where uh, temperatures in Labrador are going to be yeah, riding that high teen low 20 mark right through the next seven. Well, it's time now for our young athlete of the day. We want to introduce you to Owen McCarthy from Quarterbrook. Owen is six years old and plays hockey, soccer and baseball and he also loves snowboarding at Marble Mountain in the winter. Awesome job Owen. You're today's young athlete of the day. While the U.S. Midwest is recovering after a lashing of extreme weather over the weekend, severe damage is being reported in Missouri and Oklahoma, leaving some without power and others with a lot of repair work to do. Yeah, this was the third time within the past two weeks that Kansas City has had a significant flood. Forecasters say more storms may return to Missouri this week, but they're not expected to be as severe. More national and international news coming up. Welcome back to Here and Now. Sidney Crosby celebrated his 30th birthday today by taking part in a parade. And he wasn't alone. The hockey superstar had the Stanley Cup along for the ride. Carolyn Ray has the story. Oh my God! Say happy birthday. Happy birthday, Sid! 
for Kaylee Spray, this is the moment. She came from St. John, New Brunswick to see Sidney Crosby. Oh my God, <laughs> he's right there. <laughs> it was like that all morning as Crosby wound his way through the city. All the way from Ontario. See this? Yeah, Absolutely. see Crosby. This is Crosby's third visit to Nova Scotia with the Cup. He first won it with the team in 2009, then again last year. For some families, it's become a tradition. They haven't missed a single Stanley Cup party, making signs to occupy their time, some even staging appropriate activities. Around here, Crosby has inspired a generation of hockey fans. I wore number 87 last year and I, and I was the captain of my team. I've liked them since I was born. They're the first team I saw play in hockey. Even this four-month-old baby can claim a Crosby connection. Daisy May was born on the first day of this year's playoff run. I'm a huge Crosby fan and my boyfriend's a really big um, Malkin fan. So naturally she's going to be a Penguins fan. <laughs> Crosby's quick visit here is finished, but people are already hoping there will be a repeat next year. Carolyn Ray, CBC News, Halifax. Well, General Motors is recalling nearly 800,000 pickup trucks worldwide, including 80,000 in Canada due to a steering problem. The recall affects two 2014 trucks, the Chevy Silverado 1500 and also the GMC Sierra 1500. The company says the power steering can temporarily cut out, especially during low speed turns. And if that happens, the driver could lose control of the vehicle. Well, appalling and shameful or important and historic. Just some of the reaction to a new documentary on Princess Diana. The film uses private tapes of Diana talking about her sex life with Prince Charles and the collapse of their marriage. As Renee Filippone reports, some people question the documentary's value 20 years after her death. Sort of once every three weeks. And then it fizzled out past seven years ago, six years ago. In her living room, the Princess of Wales opens up in private to her voice coach. Slightly faster about intimate details of life with Charles and her struggle inside the palace walls. I chose to hurt myself instead of hurting all of you. Channel 4 made the decision to air the videos now to mark 20 years since her death. Everybody knew about the bulimia in the family um, and they all blamed the failure of the match on the bulimia. Diana has spoken candidly about her life. Do you think Mrs. Parker Bowles was a factor in the breakdown of your marriage? Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. <laughs> she wasn't shy to air her grievances with the royal family. People involved in the documentary say she would have wanted these tapes public. Not everyone agrees. People do have a fascination, but I'm not sure that it's the sort of fascination we should be feeding. This royal biographer says releasing this video will only hurt the royals at an important time of transition by giving people who are not fans of the monarchy more reason to turn their back on them this is damaging to the monarchy and they want it all out there and they think that it's um, that it's the right of us to know what went on um, it's not our right to know what went on you've got a voice that people want to hear it's just one of many acknowledgments of Diana's lasting memory this year each with its own take on her legacy marking the life and death of a woman fondly known as the people's princess Renee Filipponi CBC News London well, if you thought raccoons were bad, take a look at these backyard intruders. Romanians are struggling with an influx of brown bears into mountain cities. One of their favorite targets, trash cans, often good for a meal or two. Yeah, that's led to some uh, close encounters like the ones you see here between residents and even some dangerous confrontations. Seven people have been injured in one county alone. Romania is home to more than half of the brown bears in Europe, and yes, they are protected.
Welcome back to Here and Now. While well, these little fish are making a big splash in the art world, have a look. Using lights, music, giant fish bowls, and of course, colorful fish, the show creates a psychedelic atmosphere for viewers. This Japanese artist used about 8,000 goldfish and other sea creatures as part of the live art installation. Tens of thousands of art lovers have visited the art aquarium in Tokyo every year, and it's certainly a fantastic show. <laughs> Well, it was a happy ending for a poor bear who had his head stuck in a jar. Police in California found the real-life Winnie the Pooh struggling to free himself. An officer embraced the cub uh, in a bear hug. And uh, as another pried the jug off the animal's head, and once freed, the cub was seen running back into the wild. No sign of Tigger Aww. or Eeyore or Piglet, <laughs> no. were there? No. Yeah. Don't know if it's honey in there or not. Yeah, I was going to say, it had to be honey, right? <laughs> Just to make it uh, stereotypical bear in oh. the Aww. jar. Poor at least he got he, he, at least he got free. Yeah. yeah. Happy ending. Okay. Now it pops off here. I think we see this on video. Yeah. The, and okay. he takes off. Just want to make sure. it's stuck on there, isn't it? He really was getting just the, the very nice stuff at the bottom, right? That's where the, the tastiest honey is. It must have been something good in there. Oh, come on. Well, maybe we won't see. I don't know. It's taking a while. All right, so it did come off though. Uh, next three real quick, and I want to show you this picture. That looks like fog around the pond, right? It does. Mm -hmm. Missed. That is not. That is. Those are flies what? around the pond in Grand Falls, Windsor. No. Ugh. Elmo Hewlett, thank you very much for sharing that. I think. Oh. Have a great.